Okay. So welcome everyone. We're going to begin in a moment, just making sure that everything is in working order. I think it is. And we're also live on Facebook. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. Um, if you're actually sitting in front of your camera, you are very welcome to uh, be with your video open. If not, uh, it's best if you uh, close your camera. Uh, and uh, the most important thing right now is to stay muted. Otherwise, it causes all sorts of problems. Uh, so please, 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 uh, some of you become unmuted all the time. Please take care of it. Okay, it causes a lot of problems. I don't want to discuss them right now. Okay, and I'm muting you all, but please stay that way. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, good morning again to everybody who is in uh, my time zone and. Uh, um, Again, uh, stay muted, please. Uh, there will be time for questions and discussion at the end of our meeting. So, uh, uh, and we have actually a very interesting uh, question which I might uh, um, answer a little bit from my point of view. So uh, until then, we're all muted, okay? Uh, so now I'll open uh, more formally. Uh, welcome everybody here in the Zoom room. Welcome to anyone who might be watching on Facebook right now and who might be watching on YouTube in the future or any other uh, way uh, in the future. Uh, you're very, very welcome to part 11 uh, of the series, What Makes Our Inner Work Work? Um, in this series, I try to look at my inner work and other people's inner work, uh, people that I've been working with, my students, etc. Uh, I also sometimes have guests over, and we're trying to figure out what is it that makes the difference uh, between uh, uh, inner work or things we call inner work that actually works and and what doesn't work as well if at all or even causes us harm and the series is also about uh, um, perhaps giving inspiration uh, or giving uh, empowering more people to actually do uh, the inner work in a way that works, of course. So um, this part, part 11, is called Our Essence, Our Purpose. Uh, last meeting I, I spoke with uh, Tim Kelly uh, and one of the things that he um, uh, brought up uh, had to do with vision, with purpose, um, you know, with this a thing you you uh, uh, aim towards okay for example I want to have a better relationship with my mother or things like that or I want to be less critical of myself uh, but it can also be something much much uh, deeper and wider in a way um, now I'm not going to talk very much and very precisely about Tim Kelly's ideas. Um, there's his book, True Purpose. Uh, if you want to read the basics, uh, I recommend it. Uh, and uh, there may be uh, more information on the internet about it, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, uh, even if you read the book, uh, the ideas have uh, progressed since then, as often happens. But still, you'll get a very, very good uh, uh, basic understanding there and ways to, to work on it. Um, so, so this is not about how Tim does it. It's only a little bit about it, and it's my take 
of some of this and it doesn't even encompass everything that I do with my purpose. Um, now, when I say purpose, can you write in the chat what comes to your mind? Both about the word purpose, it would, or the word essence, if anything pops to your mind. Let's see if anybody is getting anything. Now, it doesn't have to be, you know, a, a correct answer. There is no such thing. It's just to, to understand what people uh, think about and feel when they hear these words. Um, so we'll see if anybody has anything. Um, when I'm talking about purpose, I'm not talking about something like, uh, uh, it's my purpose to be a musician or a mathematician or a writer or a teacher or a nurse or, or to do things about food. Um, so uh, I'm talking about something else, which we'll discuss in a second. Somebody is writing in the chat book. Uh, it's a question if there's actually something like this. Sometimes it's only the art of living. So great. Now I'm not talking in this series at all and, and particularly not today about what is the truth or what fits everybody. Uh, we're talking here about things that help us make our inner work work. So this can be suitable for one person and less suitable for another but it might give some inspiration. Somebody else is writing in the chat room uh, and uh, um, uh, to, to hmm, I can't find the, um, the word right now, but to uh, make the best of my potential, something like that. Right, um, so, so we're not talking about something like my purpose is to be a mother, a nurse, uh, uh, a musician, or anything like that. We're talking more um, today about something that has to do with uh, how we get in touch with our essence. Now, again, this is something that might work for some of us and not for everybody. Um, somebody else is writing, uh, the purpose is being me, be happy, do what makes me happy and fulfill myself. Yeah, of course, of course, that is part of it. And, uh, and, uh, and it's, uh, it works, you know, if you're synchronized with that. To be synchronized with uh, my will and the, the, um, uh, the expression of my soul or my uh, spiritual part. Okay, also. Right. Um, uh, please, please, please stay muted all the time until I tell you otherwise. Okay. Uh, please. Okay. So um, now, as I said before, working with our purpose or essence uh, is not a must. You know, some people do extremely uh, wonderful inner work without ever thinking about things like what is my essence or what is my purpose uh, and yet as I said it can help a lot now you know one of the things that I am daring to do uh, not exactly for the first time but definitely uh, so much um, in this series is to um, actually share things from my own process with you now this isn't that easy for me because I'm sure, absolutely sure, <laughs> that a lot of people will misunderstand what I say, but there's, you know, or think that if I share one thing, then they understand who I am, although there are 10 million other things that I don't share and won't share probably. So, but still I decided to do it because in a way it's part of my essence and purpose to share my specific way and hope that it inspires others to do their own work um, in a way that, 
that is good for them. So before I began doing what I do now, uh, some of you may know, I, I was for a while, uh, about seven years, I think, uh, in graphic design and uh, printing. And, um, and I remember I was much, much younger then. Uh, I was, uh, I think, uh, in my late, late uh, uh, 20s and early 30s. Um, I was naturally looking for a, a name and a logo for my studio, you know, and a graphic designer without a logo and, uh, and, and stuff like that is, you know, it's, it's amusing to say the least. And it was hard for me to, to find what it might be for me at that point. Um, and it often is a little bit difficult to, to think about uh, what is my essence, what is my purpose and stuff like that. So it took me quite a long time. Uh, but finally, uh, what came up for me was the name Lighthouse. Um, lighthouse. Uh, and in Hebrew, it was also sort of akin to my name, uh, which means light. Um, so I think that using this uh, uh, name Lighthouse was perhaps a first version of working without knowing it that much, not as consciously as today, with my essence. Um, in a way that fit me back then. And it had to do with the feeling that I could help people find their way safely, you know, like a lighthouse is supposed to do. Um, and that it was true even though I wasn't working in my current field or even dreaming of it at the, as far as I can recall. Uh, now, as soon as I began working as a facilitator and teacher, I felt, uh, you know, like many people, especially people who, who do inner work or who are teachers or who work with other people, I had this feeling uh, that I had an idea of what my purpose was, uh, but it was pretty vague. I never really worked on it, thought about it, like a lot of us tend to do naturally. Uh, it was not anything that I put into words or images. Uh, but in uh, uh, 2010 or so, I met uh, Tim Kelly. Uh, and this subject, which was very, very important to him, became something we talk talked about. Um, and, um, and I got some inspiration from that. Um, and it turned out that it was really, really important for me. I don't know if it was absolutely essential for me to to find my way forward or not, it's, I, I can't tell, uh, but I know that it was really, really useful for me and I'm very grateful for it. Um, now, I remember my first glimpse when I just thought about it for the first time, not really did any deep work, but I was thinking about it and this was years after Lighthouse already. Uh, my first glimpse was a kind of image of, uh, tears or rifts like cuts in what I later began uh, calling the living tissue of consciousness or the living tissue of life, which is like uh, uh, looking at life and that consciousness is a kind of uh, uh, tapestry perhaps, which, is, uh, which has a lot of uh, strings that make it, right? A lot of threads that, that make it. Uh, that create it. And, um, uh, and I, I, I could see that there were uh, cuts in, in the, the collective tapestry and naturally in my tapestry as well, to a certain extent. Uh, and the first image I saw was that I was repairing or healing or sewing these rifts or these cuts in the tapestry. Uh, in the living tissue of consciousness. So that was kind of a, a beginning of something a bit new. Uh, but then uh, sometime later, um, I began receiving information um, that had to do with being a diamond. Okay, now it was a surprising image for me 
uh, because I really, I was never interested in diamonds in my life. I never owned a diamond. I never remember wanting a diamond. It, you know, it was an interesting thing. You know, a diamond is the uh, hardest material on earth, kind of an interesting concept. It can look nice and shiny and beautiful, but it didn't really interest me or attracted me. And yet what came up for me when I was thinking about, uh, and, and not only thinking, but doing real actual work to understand what my essence and my purpose were, what came up was a diamond. Um, so a surprising image for me. Uh, and this can often be the case, not necessarily, but it, it happens. Um, so I, I started working on that. And uh, the idea of a diamond really spoke to me about being very, very powerful and strong, uh, being uh, uh, very tough in a way, you know, being something that is... Uh, both very clear, that has many, many facets. You know I'm into the, the multiple selves, okay? So that also spoke to me. And being very clear, so you can look through it. There was no, nothing interfering with the light going through it. And also, um, uh, it was uh, uh, shiny, you know? It was kind of filled with light. And... Uh, and strong. So I said, ah, okay, so something in that is giving me inspiration on my route and on my path of becoming more and more myself. Okay, and I started working with that image. Um, and later it became even more uh, clear to me, and another word was added to it. And now my purpose or the essence of my purpose evolved into uh, the phrase, I am an indestructible diamond. So you see, it seemed that my uh, specific path, and it's my path, it's not anybody else's path necessarily, had to, be, uh, had to do with finding uh, the way to be more and more indestructible something that you cannot destroy, you cannot harm, okay? Uh, and you can see, I think, how this would add something um, to inspire my development, my evolution, um, and, and, and how it might a little bit relate to that first name I gave myself or my business more, more, to, more correctly, which was the lighthouse. Okay, now uh, a purpose is not something that uh, necessarily remains the same all the time. You know, like I evolve, my purpose can evolve, okay, or the essence of my purpose. This is actually what we're talking about right now. Um, and, and working about, uh, on it again and again enables us to not become stagnant, but to uh, have new um, inspiration again and again in our path. You know, it's very often that I notice that uh, a purpose that I've reached, um, it seems that it doesn't work that much anymore. And then I ask myself, if it feels necessary for my um, uh, ongoing development, what now? Okay. How is it evolving? What will inspire me now? What will kind of give my, my way more direction? Okay. Um, so for a while it was, I am an indestructible diamond. And I was working with that. And then came uh, the name that you all know, because uh, I use it a lot right now. Uh, I am a flowering diamond. Now this for me was a very important development because if you see uh, a diamond, you know, it's very, very stable and static to a certain degree and very hard. 
But if this very hard thing is both an indestructible diamond and it also flowers, then something else is added. And again, I am not going into all the intricacies of it for me, but, but it seemed to be inspiring a, a kind of a combination of something that is really, really hard and unbreakable with something really, really gentle, like the flowering of a flower, which is soft, which is gentle, which is, uh, um, you could say, you know, it's a matter of perspective, but feminine. So the diamond was kind of more masculine and the flowering was more feminine. Uh, the diamond was really immovable. The flower was becoming, was emerging, was alive, was uh, um, organic and so on and so forth. So um, there was a hardness and a softness and something about that now inspired me more. And it doesn't mean that I wasn't like that to, to a certain degree before I discovered that, but it kind of gives an additional uh, way of working with things and expressing them and experiencing them, okay? Um, now, this was enough for a while, uh, and then it felt like it needed to change again. Now, if you notice my uh, logo, uh, the Flowering Diamond Way logo, you might see that it seems as if it's uh, drawn and actually was drawn in pencil. You know, it looks a bit like uh, a sketch, not something finished. And that was really important for me uh, when this logo appeared to me, that it looks a little bit like a flower, it looks a little bit like a diamond, but it's a sketch. Because for me, it's very, very important to keep things alive all the time, okay? Not to uh, get into a locked thing. So this is also uh, a way of expressing the way that I'm trying to teach others. You know, keep changing, keep revealing who you are, keep uh, 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 allowing yourself to figure out more about what you can be, what you want to become, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, the next stage was very hard for me to to take, and this often happens uh, with uh, uh, when you work with purpose and essence and blessing and all sorts of other things uh, that have to do with Tim's way uh, of doing it, because there are always parts of us that resist growing, that are afraid of growing, that are afraid of what might be uh, our life if we accept our purpose, you know, or what, what changes will we be uh, having to make? You know, we don't have to make any changes, uh, but kind of called to make if we understand more about our essence or our purpose. Um, these things are scary and growing can sometimes be pretty frightening from, for a lot of us. Um, so, and also, you know, just like uh, thinking that to, in a way I am a diamond or a flowering diamond or an indestructible, indestructible diamond, to a lot of my parts who are more um, kind of, um, uh, how do I say, um, don't like to be too important, too on stage, too uh, um, uh, um, you know that there are more on the humble side of things. You know these things aren't easy for for that kind of part within us. So uh, and yet, while uh, uh, I, I was beginning to feel that the juice for me in I am a flowering diamond was beginning to be to go down. It wasn't as inspiring as it was before. I opened up to figuring out what the new thing would be. And it was pretty shocking for me and pretty hard to, to accept uh, because the next phase was, um, uh, I'll tell you in a moment. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll, I'll say a few more things uh, before that, maybe to, to build that. <laughs> 
<laughs> the expectation a little bit. Um, you know, things like purpose involve responsibility as well. Now, if I know what my purpose is, then I, I'm kind of called to additional responsibility in my life, in the world, uh, with others, etc. Um, so, so that also is kind of a burden for many of us. We, kind of, we don't want to shoulder more responsibility. Of course, the, the, the good thing about it is that usually we don't want to shoulder it before it happens. It feels really uh, heavy. But when we actually do it, it usually simply feels much easier to live this way. Um, now, uh, once we move into the inner work and the sphere of working with the psyche, uh, working with um, the spirit, spiritual things, and so on and so forth, uh, as I said quite a few times before in this series, it's very, very advisable to ask less things such as, is it true? Is it the truth? Or is it scientific? Or is it provable? Because in this sphere, uh, it's very, very clear, more than in other spheres perhaps, that we can't really prove anything uh, because this is subjective reality. It's still reality, it's my reality, but it's subjective. Um, and if we keep asking ourselves things like, um, is it the truth? Am I, uh, you know, just fooling myself too much? Uh, we become really riddled with doubt. We become very, very weak because we keep questioning ourselves. So what again and again I recommend is checking things more from the um, uh, point of view of what is it doing to me? Is it working? Is it making me stronger? Is it making me freer? Is it making me happier? Is it making my relationships better? And things like that. Um, so uh, this new uh, and very, very hard to swallow uh, essence was, I am the creator of the universe. You can understand how difficult to swallow something like this is. Uh, and it, it sounded, you know, megalomanic, it sounded egocentric, it sounded stupid, it sounded, you know, I felt a lot of resistance to it. And yet it was, there was something exciting about it. And, uh, and of course, if we think about it, uh, to a certain degree, are we not all the creators of our universes, of our life, of our world? Uh, whatever is the truth about that, this uh, very challenging um, essence or purpose uh, gave me a lot of motivation and explained a lot of things for me uh, that I can find years and years before, you know, in poetry and things that came up for me. Uh, but now it was becoming something that I was going to work with and that gave me uh, empowerment and inspiration and, uh, uh, and something really interesting to, to bite into, okay? Um, now, this is a really, really kind of type of uh, big essence. But remember how it started. It started with perhaps something like I'm a lighthouse or I mend the rifts in, in, in the, uh, that are torn, whatever is torn uh, in the fabric of reality or stuff like that. And, and your essence and purpose does not necessarily have to be something so, you know, huge and uh, overpowering to a certain extent. It can be something like, uh, I'm, a I'm just inventing this, you know, I'm, I'm a flower in the snow, or I'm a, a sunny sea, or I am heaven here and now, or, you know, the, the people find very, very, very different 
types of essences and purposes um, uh, when they start doing this work and looking into it. So mine is in no way supposed to be similar to anything else uh, in the world even, you know, necessarily. It's, it's a call to grow. It's a call to look inside. Um, and for me, it was suitable. Um, so when you find something like this, it's both exciting and very alarming, as I explained earlier, uh, because, again, it calls me to grow and to develop. And, um, and, and once, uh, you know, once you have an idea about what your essence is uh, for now, you know, or, or it helps you have sort of better idea of how you can live your actual life. You know, now, there are other aspects to, um, to the, the, the subject of essence and purpose, uh, and I can't talk about all of them. Uh, so it's a very, very limited story that I'm telling you. But one of the things is, okay, let's say that I am the creator of the universe, okay? So how does that begin to percolate into my life and into my work, okay? For example, how does it influence uh, what I teach in my case or, or how I facilitate people, stuff like that, uh, which I, I, I probably will tell you about at a later stage. Uh, I'll just tell you as we end this part that uh, my essence developed even a little more than that. And uh, uh, it became even greater if that is even possible. But now, for example, I'm not sure that it's enough. So it may be the end of the road for, for now for working with... Uh, with purpose and essence for me as a way of inspiring my development or perhaps if I decide to do it, I will do some more work and I'll discover a new essence as part of my purpose. Okay. Um, so we'll probably return to talk about this uh, very uh, useful uh, way of working with ourselves in the future. Um, I'll just check if there's anything else uh, in the chat room before we move to the second part. Okay. Um, so uh, we'll have a very, very brief um, uh, uh, recess of about two seconds and We'll be back in a second and then I will answer questions also. Okay, so just a second. 